good day students today our topic of discussion is about an application of the n slit fraunhofer diffraction the case study of plane diffraction grating here is the picture is shown a number of gratings it is basically an optical element that is a transparent material upon which a number of lines is drawn and that transparent material can take any shape it can be that of a square it can be that of a rectangle it can be that of a circle so depending upon our ease we can choose the shape of the grating now what is a plane diffraction grating it is an arrangement of a large number of slits of equal width separated by opaque portions arranged at equal distances so this can be made or it, in other terms it can be explained as an optically plain glass plate with a large number of fine that is very small equidistant and parallel lines drawn on it all these three adjectives are very important fine equidistant and parallel now here in the figure i'll show you how it is done so here we have a rectangular section of a glass plate and upon that using a diamond pointer or a very sharp pointer we draw parallel lines very fine parallel lines across it and the path where we draw it becomes the glass becomes opaque and the path where we do not touch it still remains transparent okay so these opaque regions and transparent regions arranged alternatively they make this grating the ruled lines are opacities and the space between any two lines are transparencies so in effect we get an arrangement of a large number of transparent slits of equal width and they are separated by opaque portions arranged at equal distances now this grating is usually used to determine the wavelength of light let us derive the grating law from it now here on the left side i have drawn the image schematic image for grating and the opaque regions has a width of small a and the transparent regions has a width of small b when plane wave or plane light is incident upon it light passes through these gratings and they diffract through this slits these diffracted light can be focused using a convex lens onto a point and there we place the screen now this black line perpendicular to the screen is used to represent the optic axis let the point where all the diffracted light is focused be called p1 and the central point be p and the angle of this focus light with respect to the grating is termed as theta the diffracting angle theta here the distance a plus b is called the grating element distance of an opacity added to the distance of a transparency is called a grating element now to get a condition at the point p1 let us calculate the path difference path difference at p1 is a plus b sin theta for normal incidence on the grating we have seen this during the n slit diffraction discussion now if p1 is a point of principal maxima there the path difference should be equal to integral multiple of lambda that is a plus b sin theta is equal to n lambda and the principal maximas of different orders can be obtained by giving values of n equal to 1 2 3 etc so when n is equal to 1 we have the first principal maxima where path difference is equal to lambda and when n is equal to 2 we get the second principal maxima where 
path difference is equal to 2 lambda. Okay, so just giving numbers their values, I am obtaining the first, second, third, etc. principal maximus. And in between the principal maximus, there will be uh, a number of secondary maximus and minimus depending upon the number of slits. Here, a plus b sine theta is equal to plus or minus n lambda implies that there are a number of principal maximus on either side of the central point P. Plus or minus indicates that there are principal maximus on this side of P and on this side of P. Here I've just shown one case of theta that focuses light to P1. Now diffraction angle is different for different wavelengths. Okay, so here only for a particular wavelength have we defined this equation path difference is equal to n lambda depending on lambda theta will vary that is explained by this sentence diffraction angle is different for different wavelengths hence if we use composite light or white light its spectra is obtained due to diffraction its different components is obtained on the screen now, if there are n rulings on 1 meter of the grating, n number of lines on 1 meter of the grating, we can write 1 meter is equal to n times the grating element. That is 1 is equal to n into a plus b. Hence, this equation above can be rewritten by substituting for a plus b as sin theta n is equal to plus or minus capital N small n lambda. This is called the grating law. Now let us see the dependence of the diffraction angle on wavelength. We have seen these two light sources in our laboratory, right? So this white lamp is the mercury vapor lamp and this yellow lamp is a sodium vapor lamp. Okay. Now, here mercury lamp gives white light, hence it is a composite light that can be diffracted into its different component wavelengths. Now, this is the spectra from mercury vapor lamp. Okay. So, here we can see the violet 1 spectral line, violet 2 spectral line, the blue line, the green line, yellow 1 line, yellow 2 line, the orange line and the red line. Each will have their characteristic wavelength and it will be characteristic values for each element. So we have characteristic wavelengths for mercury gas. Now will we have the same spectra for the sodium vapor lamp? No, right. So if we take the spectra of the sodium vapor lamp we will have just the yellow lines of sodium, the two yellow lines of sodium and that too its position is changed that is its wavelength is different than that of the yellow lines of mercury vapor lamp. Only there is a slight change in nanometers but even that slight change is a change and that uh, is called its characteristic wavelength. So from this slide we can see that for different wavelengths, the light is diffracted to different angles. Now here in the image, we have the picture of a grating at this point and this grating will diffract light based upon its wavelength. Now if white light is used, at the center we will get the image of that white source and on either side of it, we will see the spectra. So the lower wavelength will be nearer to the central point. So on the top of P, we have the colors ranging from violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, the rainbow spectrum. And again, at the point below P, we have the colors ranging from violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So while doing the experiment, we usually move the telescope to one extreme point and then take the readings of wavelengths continuously from that point to the opposite point. 
So here, if we take the telescope in the spectrometer to the top, we first read the red line, the orange line, the yellow line, the green line, the blue line, the indigo line, the violet line on the right of the central image and then we move towards the left of the central image reading the violet line, the indigo line, the blue line, the green line, the yellow line, the orange line and the red line. We use this technique to avoid backlash error in the instrument. Now this shows the first order spectrum of the light. In the grating on either side of the first order we can get the second order spectrums that is first order spectrum is obtained when we give n equal to 1 in the equation of grating law. When n equals 2 we get the second order spectrum. So here on the central point we have the central white region and on either side we have the first order spectrum and after that on either side we have the second order spectrum. Notice that the intensity will decrease as the order of the spectrum increases. So here the first order spectrum will have the maximum intensity and the second order spectrum will have lower intensity than the first order spectrum. If we take the third order spectrum, if we try to observe the third order spectrum, it, will, it may be very faint and we might not be able to even view it. Now let's learn about the resolving power and resolution of optical elements. Here on the screen I have shown two pictures. Okay. But one is clear whereas one is not. Now from this picture we can define the resolution of the instrument that we are using to take a picture. Now by the term resolution we mean the method of separating two very close objects. So if we have very close points, two points, we need to distinguish them separately. So the method of distinguishing them separately is called resolution. Now the resolving power of that optical element is the ability of an optical instrument to produce distinctly separate images of two objects that are very close together. The resolving power can be explained in another words as the reciprocal of the smallest angle subtended at the objective of optical instrument by two point objects. That is, if we have two close objects, let this be point one, and let this be point 2. Okay. And let us have our telescope here. Now these two points make an angle with respect to telescope. That is, we draw a line towards point 1 and we draw another line towards point 2. And this makes an angle. Right? Now for our eyes, the least angle that two point object should make so that we can see it is one minute. Try to imagine what is one minute. It is not one degree, it is one minute. So our eyes have very good resolution. Okay. So mathematically I can define the resolving power as this angle, the smallest angle subtended at the objective of an optical instrument by two point objects. And uh, for common man, we can explain it by saying that it is the ability of the optical instrument to produce separate images of two very nearby points. So in this picture, if we take two points on the hand of this girl, since the instrument is not able to distinguish it sep uh, separately, we get a poor image. Whereas this instrument has the capability to distinguish it separately and hence we get a very clear image. Now what do you mean by the resolving power of a grating in particular? Okay, So in the earlier slide it was a general explanation but for a grating how do we explain specifically? It is the ability of that grating to show very close to neighbor to neighboring lines in a spectrum as separate. Okay. 
So the grating, its purpose is to show a spectrum. It does not take a photograph or picture. Okay, so in a grating, its resolution is defined as its ability to separate two neighboring spectral lines. And mathematically, it is given as the ratio of wavelength of any spectral line, lambda, to the smallest difference in wavelength, d lambda. That is, resolving power of a grating is mathematically given by lambda by d lambda. Well, in the case of the spectrum, if we uh, see earlier, here the resolving power of the mercury vapor lamp can be defined as the wavelength of yellow line okay, divided by the difference in the wavelengths of yellow 1, yellow 2 lines. Again, in sodium vapor lamp, we have two yellow lines very close to each other. So, here the resolving power can be taken as wavelength of yellow line divided by the difference in wavelengths of two nearby yellow lines. Coming back, resolving power can be defined in two ways. The first one is geometrical resolution. Here, it is referring to the resolution in telescopes or microscopes. So, this shows the resolution in a picture, in a full view. The other uh, term is the spectral resolution where we get the ability to distinguish two different spectral lines and this is obtained in prisms and gratings. The picture shown below are images of two nearby points and there are differences in all the three pictures. This is because all the three instruments that were used to capture it has different resolving powers. And the instrument that captured this picture has the best resolution, whereas this instrument can just distinguish between the two points. The image is still not clear, whereas this instrument cannot distinguish the two points as separate. Now let us derive the resolving power of a grating mathematically. In the figure, we have a series of opaque and transparent regions that is a grating on which light is incident. The wavelength lambda will form a diffraction pattern that is shown by the black lines, the dark line, whereas the wavelength lambda plus d lambda, a small change, it produces another pattern uh, which is a bit more fainter than the earlier one. So here we have assumed that light has two wavelengths, lambda and lambda plus d lambda. And both of them form their diffraction patterns at separate points. At point P1, we have the pattern, the principal maxima of lambda. And at point P2, we have the principal maxima of lambda plus d lambda. At P1, let the nth primary maxima for lambda be given as a plus b sine theta is equal to n lambda. And its first secondary minima will fall at P2. And that can be given by the equation A plus B sine of, there will be a change in theta, right? So the change in theta towards that point is theta plus D theta. So A plus B sine theta plus D theta is equal to the central point plus the distance path difference towards the first secondary minima. That is N lambda plus lambda divided by n dash, where n dash is the number of lines on a standard grating of 1 meter. Okay. Now, at P2, we have said that lambda plus d lambda forms its primary maxima. So, the equation for the primary maxima for lambda plus d lambda can be given as a plus b the angle towards that point is theta plus d theta. So, a plus b sine of theta plus d theta is equal to n times lambda plus d lambda. Okay. Now, comparing these two equations, this equation and this equation, on the left-hand side, it is same. Whereas, on the right-hand side, I have n lambda plus lambda by n dash. And here, I have n lambda plus n d lambda. 
these two equations imply that n d lambda is equal to lambda by n dash. That is, I can rewrite the equation as resolving power lambda by d lambda is equal to n capital N dash. Here small n is the order of the spectrum and capital N dash is the number of lines on a standard grating. We should know that n will be the number of lines on a simple grating. We need not see whether it is 1 meter or 2 meter. Its length is not standardized. So capital N in expressions will represent the number of gratings on that element. Whereas n dash represents the number of gratings if that element was in 1 meter. Now, the resolving power of the grating can be explained by Rayleigh's criterion for resolution. Now, Rayleigh said that two diffraction patterns of closely situated, equally bright point sources can be seen as separate only if the central maxima of one coincides with the first minima of the other. So, in order to distinguish two points as separate, the least condition they should obey is that of Rayleigh criterion. So, according to this, I, if I have two points and I get their two different diffraction patterns, the maxima of one point should at least fall only up to the secondary minima of the other pattern. If the maxima comes at a point lesser than the secondary minima here. So in this uh, picture here, the secondary minima of one of the patterns is at this point, whereas the maxima of the other point is within the secondary minima, right? And hence, we won't be able to resolve that two points. So we get only a single point there. Whereas, if the maxima of one pattern is at least at the secondary minima, of the other pattern, we will be able to just distinguish between the two points. And if the patterns are further apart, we can see the two points far more resolved. Now for a telescope, mathematically it can be calculated from uh, the inverse of limit of resolution, that is d theta. Limit of resolution is defined as d theta. The resolving power of the telescope is mathematically obtained as diameter of the aperture small d divided by 1.22 times lambda wavelength of the light that we are observing. And the radius of the central bright image, the radius of the point object that we observe is obtained from 1.22 lambda times f focal length of the lens divided by diameter of the aperture lens small d. Now another parameter of this optical element of this grating is its dispersive power. It is defined as the rate of change of angle of diffraction with respect to wavelength. That is rate of change is d by d lambda of theta. So if theta is the diffraction angle for wavelength lambda and theta plus d theta is the diffraction angle for the wavelength lambda plus d lambda, dispersive power is mathematically defined as d theta divided by d lambda. Now to obtain that, first let's take the grating law. We have sine theta is equal to plus or minus n n lambda. Differentiating this equation, we get cos theta d theta is equal to n n d lambda. The variables here are theta, diffraction angle and wavelength. Rearranging this expression, we can write d theta by d lambda is equal to n n divided by cos theta. That is, dispersive power is directly proportional to the number of lines n per unit length of grating and inversely proportional to the cosine of the angle of diffraction. So if we need high dispersive power in this grating, we just need to select a grating of larger n values and take the first order spectrum from it. And hence we get 
wide separation of spectral lines now if we take a grating having n number of lines 600 lines per meter this will be the spectra that we get from it and if we take another grating of having n 12000 lines per meter the spectra that we obtain will be spread much more okay so the, the distance between the spectral lines is greater so if we use a grating having larger number of n values n uh, lines uh, we will be able to distinguish very near lines in a better manner so this yellow one yellow two lines that can be seen separate here okay clearly seen as separate lines whereas these two lines it will be a bit difficult to measure the two different points using the spectrometer so with that we have come to the end of today's session thank you